Shady County, that's our point of honor. I want you to take those words of wisdom with you today in all of us. Family, I'd like you to stand. Internet audience, I'd like you to stand. On behalf of our chief elder and spiritual leader, Dr. Ray Hayden, to you, our family here at the African Village, family, friends, and guests, I'd like to welcome you here today to give him a round of applause. He's been here before. Many of you probably have seen him in the internet audience. You may have seen him also. And I can tell you, you're in for something wonderful. His, next, his name is our Mwangu teacher for today, Gregory Stanton, also known as Asar, from the Oasis Spiritual Center for Divine Living. Let's give him a hand. Yeah. <laughs>
This message this morning that I have is entitled, The Necessity of Transformation. Look at your neighbor and say, The Necessity of Transformation. Necessity means something that is essential for things to happen. You have to understand that so many people today are saying they are awake or as if they are transformed. So many people are thinking that they're conscious just because they can say Ma'ahotep or they can give you a list of who was in what dynasties. But I'm saying to you today, information don't change you. Application does. So this morning I want to begin to speak to you inside of this particular um, topic of transformation, setting the stage for the month that we are entering into. This is December, and children all over the United States are preparing for Santa to make a, a visit to their homes. But we need to have a transformation in that conversation. It's okay to celebrate holidays, other people's holidays, but we got to differentiate their holidays from our holy days. We have to understand as we move into the month of December and as we move to the end of the month, we will be celebrating the Ungusa Saba or the, uh, the, the time known as Kwanzaa. I'm a child of the, the, the time when Kwanzaa started. In 1966, when Dr. Malala Karina started that, um, I was six years old. I can remember being taken to the amphitheater by my school, not my parents. My school was conscious enough to take us where we needed to go. And there I remember seeing all the things that were foreign to me, but they resonated with me. I almost said they were Greek to me, but that would be like cursing this morning. But as a child, these things that were set before me at the, I probably was about the age of seven when I had my first experience of Kwanzaa. And then at the age of 30, I had the uh, opportunity to lead Kwanzaa, not only for my family, but as a part of what the church I belonged to, we presented to the community. And we did all seven days. And the reason why we did all seven days, because for 360 some odd days of the year, the individual in our community was not conscious or aware of the principles of the Inclusive Sabbath. So as we move deeper into this month, let us be mindful of some of the uh, cultural things that we need to take on. Don't just stay steeped inside of, of it's okay to celebrate Christmas. And know to separate Christmas the holiday from Christmas the holy day. Know the difference of those things. You can embrace the, them both, but you must come to the understanding of how to put things in their proper places, okay? Everything has its place, and some things need to be displaced. And I pray this morning that the words I speak to you will cause some displacement. And the displacement will come about because you are getting new information that pushes out the irrelevant information. Can I get an uh, ashe? Or can I get an amen? Ashe. Can I get an amen? amen? Now, here's, as the brother said, that it's easier for someone in ninth grade to sit in third grade versus someone in third grade sit in ninth grade. So if you know something, you have to give those who do not know the opportunity to come where you are. Right, right, right. You weren't always where you are. Yes. You didn't always have the enlightenment. You weren't always conscious. Now, there's another part of that conversation. Majority of those who are under the sound of my voice this morning, and those within my sight, have come by way of where they are by the way of Christianity. And I want to say this morning that I am unapologetically a Christian, not spelled with a C-H-R-I-S-T-A-T-I-A-N, but it's spelled with a K-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. So, what does that mean? What was originally ours was taken and adulterated. And we have to understand that. And I'll give them a little credit because perhaps what they saw our 
ancestors of the Nile Valley civilizations um, living out in a way of a spiritual system was something to be admired. And they took it upon themselves to overcast their cultural understanding or their cultural uh, selves onto the information that they were receiving. Anyone who is wise will take whatever information that they receive and process it through their own cultural orientation. The only problem with that is their cultural orientation did not allow for the proper dissemination of the information. Yeah, where that came from. Yeah. So what we have to do is like they did, is take back what we rightfully own and then disseminate it through a cultural lens or filter. Yes. We don't just take what was given to us. I am sick and tired of listening to the theologians who can quote the Greek, who can quote the Latin, but cannot talk the menu network, cannot tell you what the writings on the wall represent. The word of God that I was given as a kid told me that the rocks would cry out. Come on now. You can change a book, but you can't change the wall. If you change the wall, we'll know that it's been tampered with. So my encouragement to you this morning is to understand that your faith is historically strong. Now, when we talk about transformation, particularly inside the conversation of spiritual spirituality, we have to understand a few things. That for the majority of us who have come by way of traditional Christianity, and when I say traditional Christianity, I define it not by antiquity. 300 BC is not antiquity. 4000 BC is antiquity. We have all these scholars talking about they know something. If you don't sit in the movie at the beginning of the movie, you miss some movement in the movie. So you can't pick up halfway through the movie and then exegete for me or explain to me with thoroughness the entire movie. You gotta see the movie from the beginning. And here's the problem that I have with those of us in the conscious community. We want to pick up what we want to pick up instead of taking it back to the beginning. Go as far back in antiquity as you can go. And when you get there, guess what you will find? You will find Neteru or the Netur. You will find what they misnomer as God. God was not defined by the Germans. Neither was God defined by the Hebrew. Neither was God defined by the Romans or the Greeks or those of you today that call yourself defining God but leaving God out. It's a funny thing. That although they don't want to go back to the beginning, but they end all of their prayers with one of the Nitaru of the beginning. So when you're sitting around your table and they say the prayer and they say amen, yes, amen. they're really saying amen. amen. They just don't want to say amen. amen. So they say amen. amen. I had a problem with my uh, Sunday school teacher. As a little boy, I was one who paid attention to words. And so one Sunday, uh, when she asked me to read, at the conclusion of what I was reading, the word Amen was there. I said Amen and she said Amen. I said Amen and she said Amen. She kept saying uh, Amen and I kept saying Amen. I got in trouble when I got home. Mm -hmm. But the reality for me was that didn't set well because my third grade teacher told me that it was not Amen, it was Amen. Mm -hmm. But the problem there is when you call on the Amen or when you use the word honor, it takes you too far back into your cultural selves. And not only do you have a problem with it, but they have a problem with it. They define honor as the unseeable, the unknown. Honor is not unknown, you just don't know him. But you don't know the essence of the nature honor. But that's not my message this morning. My message this morning is, a, is about transformation and moving beyond where you are to where you need to get to. Transformation does not come by way of the accumulation of information. That's a mistake that is being made. We have to understand 
understand that the lowest level of learning is just to say belief. I believe. When someone say I believe something or my belief, that is the lowest level yes. of learning. Yes. Yes. The highest level of learning that you can matriculate to, rise to, step inside of, is that of knowing. Believing and knowing. The moment I'm in a dialogue with someone and they say, well, all I know is I believe, I leave it right there. Because you cannot change a person's belief unless they desire to have it changed. Now, transformation requires that your beliefs be transformed first. In a given, any given day, you have over 70,000, 60 to 70,000 thoughts. I know this is the field that I, I'm my area of expertise. Like Dr. Ray Hagen, I too am into the mind sciences. I too am into helping people transform their minds. Because the word tells us, as a man believeth, what? So, so is he. So your beliefs dictate who you are. So if your beliefs are erroneous, you're going to show up erroneously in life. All right. All right. Go ahead. When we look at uh, myths. Most of our beliefs are built upon myths. Now, is, are, are myths powerful? Yes, they're the most powerful thing you can have. A myth is a traditional story, especially one concerning the early history of a people or explaining some natural or social phenomenon and typically involves supernatural beings or events. Okay, so that's a myth. So we use myths to understand concepts. The problem becomes when you arise, when you take a myth literally. And that's the issue that we have um, coming in, in uh, that we engage continually as people of African descent. What we do is we take the Bible literally versus figuratively. You have to understand the Bible is the worst source document you can have as a document for history. It is not a history book. It is not history. It really is a mystery book. My story. And the reason why you are having problems decoding the Bible is because you're reading it through the lens or the cultural lenses of other people. I always tell people, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Come on now, you just change the water. <laughs> and so today I want you to be open to transformation firstly from the position of I must look at my beliefs and the myths that I follow in my life. Myth born in a manger. Myth hung on the cross. Myth dead and buried three days. Myth rose again. Myth coming back again. Those are all myths that are teaching us something on a greater level. Myth that we worship the sun. The reality is not that we worship the sun. The reality is that we know that from the sun, all life comes. We know by looking at the sun, it reminds us of our own personal relationship with the Creator. Not only is there a Son of God, but we are the sons and daughters of God. I say it. So we have to first be willing to confront the myths that we have that causes a lot of consternation, that causes a lot of challenges for individuals when they begin to question the thing that is unquestionable. I am so glad that I am born or that I am living in a day and time such as this. Yes. In days gone by, I would have been taken down from the pulpit, taken to the street, and tarred and feathered. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. But now in a day as the information age, yes. people are more open to a different narrative or a conversation. But just because you're open to a new narrative doesn't mean that you're in transformation. You got all these books. You can you can quote all, all you know some of the some of our best writers. But how is it changing your life? And that's what transformation is about. Transformation is about you moving from humanness to divineness. Transformation is moving from I'm only human to the reality of I am a spirit being having a human experience called life. When we look at transformation, transformation as a natural or physical, spiritual unfolding we are all called to unfold. In the old church, we were always um, acclimated to Romans 12. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because we understand the most, uh, the, the, the most powerful aspect of your being is your mind. The ability to observe your life, to observe yourself and change yourself. So my challenge to you this morning is to get inside of the transformation. A good example of transformation is the butterfly. Yeah. Yeah. Until you know the entire metamorphosis process and what it could eventually become, as a child, when you first see a butterfly, you will say, this is that. That is all there is to that thing. But something magically happens if the butterfly or the, the caterpillar is left to itself. Yes. I, one day I was walking, um, where I lived there, there was a path that I would walk, and it was a seven mile path I would take. And as I walked across the path on this particular day, I saw a caterpillar inching mm -hmm. across the path. Now, my concern for that caterpillar was either someone was going to step on it or one of the bike riders would have ridden over it or some keen-eyed bird yes. was spotted out of this element because it was on the gravel. It wasn't blending into the gravel. The green stood out on the gravel. And my first inclination was to pick the, butterf the caterpillar up and to move it to the other side. Yes. I wasn't afraid because as a little boy, I played with caterpillars. And so I started to do that, but Nuturu, Nutur, God, Spirit said to me, leave it be. Uh -huh. Come to realize that it is, it's important that that particular caterpillar had the opportunity to cross that road. Yeah. Because through the crossing of that road, it's building up muscle. It's building up resilience. And I stop this lesson right here to say this. Don't let someone save you from a situation that you need to stay in. Because it's strength found inside of what you're going through. You grow through what you go through. But sometimes the only reason you keep going through the same thing is because you are avoiding the process. You're allowing someone to deliver you from here to there when you're not ready to get there. Because even if you got there, you don't have the strength enough to get out of the situation even on the other side. Back to the lesson at hand. So the caterpillar, I left it alone, continued my journey. On the way back, I earmarked, or I made a mark so I know where I saw the caterpillar. I didn't see the caterpillar. I looked at the grass, I didn't see it there. So I assumed that the caterpillar, once, one, was not squashed, because I didn't see any squash marks. Two, I assumed that it made it safely to its appointed destination. Now here's a strange thing that happens once it gets to the other side. Now, I only found this out uh, a few years later. I was reading something, and it, was, it had to do with metamorphosis, and it began to talk about the caterpillar. So here we are, a couple years later, the lesson continues for me. And so as I was reading this particular book, it says that the caterpillar gets to a particular place on a tree, 
And then it, 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 it mummifies itself. It, 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 it encases itself. It, 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 it's entombed. And it, that's part of the process. Now here's the, 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 the killer. It has to have strength enough when it becomes a butterfly to get out of the cocoon. And the strength came from what he's gone, what it's gone through in life. Your strength comes from what you go through. Stop trying to get out of what you're going through. Learn why am I, why am I in the midst of this mess? Why am I in the midst of this misery? Realize this, that you all have soul agreements. You all have come here to accomplish, to do, to be a thing. And what comes with that is this, trials and tribulations. The word tells me some things work together. Uh, so y'all know the word, right? All things work together. And does it stop that? No. It says all things work together for those who love the Lord. I'm going to come back to that. Who love the Lord and are called, that means summoned. All things work together for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Now, here's what you understand. Your purpose is his purpose. The issue is you just don't know your purpose. And so when you're inside of purpose, anything that is going on in your life is working to your betterment. When you are outside of purpose, some of the things that are happening in your life is not to your betterment, but it's to your demise. So we have to begin to uh, acclimate that level of understanding into our lives to go into transformation. Many don't want transformation because transformation is painful. Transformation is a daily practice. Something you do daily. What are your daily practices? Oh, we pray when we eat our food. We pray when we, we want to get something. But the spiritual practice of prayer is the spiritual practice of conversation with it too. Conversation with something greater than, higher than, bigger than yourself. We're moving into that part of the year where we will um, take on seven, the Inclusive the seven principles of Kwanzaa. We will celebrate Umoja, that is unity, for one day. We will celebrate Kujitagali. We will be self-determined for one day. We will celebrate Ujima. We'll have collective worker responsibility for one day. We'll celebrate Ujima. Cooperative economics for one day. We will celebrate Kuumba or Nia. We'll get inside of our purpose. We'll be conscious for one day what our purpose is. We'll celebrate Kuumba. That is, we'll be creative for one day. And then lastly, we'll celebrate on the seventh day Iman, which is faith, for one day. But you got 360 some odd days that preceded that, and we're only going to celebrate them one day. That's not a spiritual practice. No, no. You are not even conscious. To me, consciousness, consciousness is that which changed my behavior. To know something and not to do something is to know nothing. And that's the issue I have with the cultural community. That's the issue I have with individuals who can spot all the information about where we came from, can tell you the cosmology of the, with the, the nine meters and all of that. That's all good. But do you know how to apply it? Well, that's what I want to talk about this morning. All right. The application of the transformation. And so if I had to relabel this, see, and I, I labeled it something that was familiar to those on Facebook. Because if I would have really gave you the real title, you were like, what? What are you talking about? So I could have said, in the old church, I would have said, be born again. That's transformation. And but I, to those who are more conscious, I want to say to you, transformation is going from ma to mat. Let me say it again. Going from ma, M-A-A, to M-A-A-T. Many people in the conscious community know nothing about ma. I mean ma. 
But they say they know ma'at. They say they're practicing ma'at. But they're not practicing ma'at. They are ma'at. Now, let me help you understand. With the comedic um, thought, there's the duality, which is represented by the feminine aspect, energy, and the masculine aspect, energy. Example, give you, when you look at the tradi tradi traditional Christianity, we have the masculine. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the invisible person. <laughs> when you look at the kinetic trinity, which represents the family, you have Asa as the father, Aset, Miss Norman, Isis, as the mother, and then you have the root, also known as Horus, as the son. It represents family. That is the most important trinity that we have, is the mother, the father, and the child, which is a bright byproduct of the male and the female. No, no, no. The male represents possibility. The female represents the cultivation, the creation, the manifestation of that possibility. So a seed, anywhere other than where it needs to be sown, possibility and potential goes down the drain. So the seed in the right uterus, the uterus of the right woman at the right time, possibility comes forth as a child. She cultivates that. That's why the African saw the woman as the god of the earth. Because he knew, she knew, that nothing came forth into the earth except it came from a womb. Come on now. Because we don't understand historically how things, or the progression of time, when man first went into the woman to know her, he didn't know that was the act of Procreation. He was just having some recreation. Can you, can you see that? See, a lot of kids, there's a lot of children born because of recreation. But when you understand procreation, you understand if I go there, this is what can come out of there. So when we talk about ma'a, which is M-A-A, -A, versus M-A-A-T, we must understand that the T, when you, whenever you see a comedic word with a T on the end, many times it denotes feminine, okay? Now, to be feminine doesn't always mean woman. All of us have both masculine, just as well as being to be masculine, does not always mean man. Inside of each of us, we have both masculine and we have feminine. Come on. That makes us man or human. But we have to understand that I have more masculine than I do feminine. That's why my phenotype is I have an Ali and she has an Indian. Y'all get what I'm saying? So in reality, on the physical level, there are differences, but yet we are the same. But I must celebrate my difference in appreciation of her difference. And when we come together, we celebrate the possibility of what we can do. So in our communities, all of us must understand that we are unique, that we are authentic, that we have something to add to the mix. Now, my eye is feminine, but not in the sense of a woman, although it shows up on the exoteric, where you can see a picture of a winged woman, okay? But it's deeper than the female that you can see with your eye. Now, the issue is this. Man is masculine expression, which means possibility. We, we do things in the ex external energy. Man deals with the, the, the naturalness of our eyes, what we can see. We deal with facts. We deal with reasons. That's why they say man is more left brain and women more right brain, meaning man is more into the reasoning faculty. We lean inside of our reasoning more than women do. And women lean, the natural woman, 
the natural woman will lean more into her, her intuitive self. Now, what we have to learn is this. The word says to be carnally minded is to be leaning into your rational mind. When you lean into your rational mind, that is the facts, the figures, the historical things, the experiences from the past, then you are dead. Here's why. The word says to be carnally minded is death. And what that means, when you are led by your sensory realm, then you are held hostage and there will be no transformation. Because your sensory realm self tells you to do what feels good to you. Your sensory mind itself tells you how to avoid discomfort, how to avoid being dissed, how to avoid pain, how to avoid embarrassment. So when we live according to the sense realm, it wants to please the flesh. But when you walk in the spirit, the word says you will not please the flesh. Now, I'm not talking from the sense of smoking, drinking, womanizing, and all of those things. I'm talking on a higher level. I'm talking that the level that requires of you to walk into your divineness. We are all called into this earth realm to move into our divine selves. You come from a place of divinity, you step into the place called humanity, and your entire earth walk should be about being transformed back to the place of being divine. Not divine from where you came from, but divine from where you are. Mm. Now let me help you with that. The Africans in the Nile Valley, first of all, let's, let's know this. We need to stop this whole conversation about I'm a Moor, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. We must understand that they were Africans. They were black. They came from the foothills of Mount Kilimanjaro, and they spread throughout the entire Pangaea, the entire world as we know it. So we are missing transformation when we get stuck in observation of just being on this, that, and the other. Take it back to the beginning. There's only one race. It's called the human race. There's deviations. Notice the deviation. There's a fading away from black. Y'all get that? Mm, yeah. But in the beginning, all was black. Even my brothers and sisters who are of European persuasion were once black. Yeah. Matter of fact, your mama yeah, was black. Yeah. Now I say that not being funny, but if you understand back in the 70s or 80s, there was a find in, in Africa that there was a, a woman who they said her DNA led to everybody. Yeah. But we don't understand that. Lucy. Yeah, Lucy. Come on now. Lucy here. Yeah. Lucy. We have to understand that if you're just positioning yourself based on your outer self, you're missing the, the essence. The African didn't just focus on their blackness, they're focused on their darkness. Yes. They had nothing to uh, to, to 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 mirror. It was relatively recent. They say about 50,000 years ago that the European man engaged the African. So up until 50,000 years ago, there was no variation. So it wasn't an issue. If I'm the only thing I'm around is men, all I know is men. But when that woman show up, I say, oh my. Because I can see a variation. Now here's what we got to understand. Books, facts, and dates, trivia, does not equip, equip you to say that you're inside of transformation. The African who practiced ma'at, now here's the difference. Ma'at is an idea. An idea like many of you know about the Nguza Sabbath. Many of you know about the seven days of Kwanzaa, but do you practice them? How many times this year did you practice Nia? How many times did you practice Kuji Tagalia? Did you name yourself, define for yourself? Or did you allow someone to name you, define you, and tell you something? So we have to understand to just know something or know of something is Ma'a. Many people who are practicing or who say they practice Ma'a are only inside of Ma'a. Ma'a. They're aware. See, awareness 
doesn't mean anything. It just means you are awake. But I know a lot of people who are awake and sleep in the bed or stay in the bed all day. Come on now. Just because you are awake does not mean that you are engaged in divinely ordered activity. And activity and accomplishment is not the same thing. Just because you're going out there doing something don't mean you're doing the right something. You have to know what is the right action that is being required of you right now. now let, let, let me help you understand true transformation. Every night, now here, here, here's the myth. A son was killed by his brother. A saw was dismembered. That is, he was cut up. Now, there are some variations to the story, so I'm giving you a synopsis. And his wife, Aset, took it upon herself to find all of his pieces and to remember them. We, like a saw, are being remembered. We are being put back together. I enjoyed watching uh, CSI. There was a particular case that I was watching on CSI where they were finding body parts all over the city. The first thing they had to do was begin to connect the body parts. When they began to connect the body, body parts, they began to see that it was a female. Then they began to see other things because they got all the pieces connected. And until we connect all of our parts back together, we are not really a song. A song is this. It's not a real God or nurture or nurture. A song is the image of divineness in the earth. Yes. You are a song. Yes. Or you should be in the process of becoming a song. For the Egyptian, many times when you read this particular book, one of these books like this, called the Egyptian Misnomer, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, is really the coming forth by day. Say it with me, coming forward by day. That means you've been in the night. It means you've been in the dark. It means enlightenment. It means transformation. Most people believe that it had to everything to do with the funerary passage, meaning when you dead at the door now. But it really means that each and every day, you should die daily. Mm -hmm. Now think about it. When you lay your head to the bed, you are close to death as you will ever be. Yes, sir. When you lay your head to the bed and your cow or leaves the body, and your body stays there, but it continues to breathe and all those things, you are not in there. You are back connected there. And we have to understand, when you look at that whole process of to die and during the 12 hours of the night, when they're on the boat of rock, as it's passing in the underworld, only to reach the other side, the east side, where you see the rising of the sun. And it's the progression of the sun rises midday, then it falls into the night sky, and then he dies again. The S-U-N dies daily, so does the S-O-N die daily. You must be inside of transformation. Now, when we talk about ma'at, people will tell you about truth, justice, balance, order, compassion, or righteousness, harmony, and reciprocity. So they think just because they can give you the, the seven virtues or principles of ma'at that they know ma'at. No, you don't know it unless you practice it. I can't say I know you unless I spend time with you. I know of you. Yes. It's not many people inside of this space that I know. I know of you all. I know that we have some commonalities because we show up at the same place on a particular day at a particular time to hear a particular word. So there are some commonalities that we have. But to practice my eyes is more than knowing certain virtues, but practicing. So this morning, I want to leave you with this. One of my source documents, see, I'm a source document person. Not only do I read the Bible, but I don't have to read it as much as I used to 
Because his word have I hid in my heart. How many times do I have to keep reading it when I can comprehend? How many times do I have to keep reading it when I realize that I am the word walking? I am the word manifesting? Come on now. And I'm definitely not going to read it from the Greek worldview or from the European worldview. I'm going to read it from my view. So this book is a great book called Spiritual Warriors Are Healers. Now, I don't get no money for this. Uh, I'm not in any kind of relationship with this brother, Brother Infidishi. But this is one of the books that I found not too long ago that's really good. And I want to share with you because he has a piece in here that deals with ma'at consciousness. The ma'at consciousness of the spiritual warrior. Now, I would say the way of life according to one who practices ma'at. So if you know something, that's called what? Three and two this morning. And that wasn't rhetorical. If you know something, it's called knowledge. knowledge. And knowledge is known as how you learn. Okay. Knowledge applied is power. Just knowing, if that's the case, the library should be able to power down, power by entire community. Because it has all knowledge. But until that knowledge is properly applied, it's just knowledge. But when it's applied, it becomes powerful knowledge. Now, here's what I'm getting at. Ma'at is the seven principles being practiced. Ma'at is awareness of. Ma'at is ideal. Ma'at is having a fact. But ma'at is taking those ideals, those facts, and putting them to practice. If you just know something is called? No. I can't start over. No. Commandment, what is it called? Who said that? Come to the front of the class so you stay there. Though. Ma'a, when you know something, it's ma'a. Ma'a, say it with me. Ma'a. Say it with me. Ma'a. And what is ma'a? To just know something. To just have information. That's ma'a. Now, ma'a is what? To practice, to apply it. And we need to move from ma'at to ma'at. Now, here, here. I love what this brother said. So, him, he says, there's 12 things we should do. We should have a right thinking on a daily basis. We should have a right understanding that leads to an overstanding versus an understanding. Can you receive that? Yeah. You must be. Right in your speech. Come on now. Words of power. Saying what you mean and mean what you're saying. You must take right action. Now, what is right action? Inspired action. Action that comes from the inside, not action that is is because of what's going on on the outside. Inspired action is to respond. Wrong action is to react. Can y'all see that? Right by the hood. Many of us are guilty of this. That kicks many of us out of my heart. We are living inside of jobs and, and, and have taken on careers that is not our right livelihood. We chose them because of the dollar, because of the Benjamins, and you're most miserable. Right. Mm. The saddest thing I ever see is when I get a new client who have just retired and feel like their whole life has been spent and now they're trying to catch what they should have had as a team. I'm sorry, baby, but at 75, you don't have the energy to pull off what you were supposed to do at 15. We have to learn to live inside of our divine purposes, not in pursuit of materialism. Now, materialism has its place. I love fine cars. I love fine dining. I love fine clothes. But I do understand this. All of those things are worthless and not worthwhile. That's it. Right meditation. Do you spend time just meditating? Just getting quiet before the Creator. Getting quiet before yourself. Right breathing. Recentering. Refocusing yourself throughout the day. Just in your breath. 
right mindfulness. Knowing that you are the observer. We are the only creation, creature, that has the ability to stand outside of ourselves at any given time and watch ourselves. Even while I speak, I'm looking at myself, saying, check yourself. That's the power you have. God looks at you, and you look at you, because you are God. Mm -hmm. right. Created in his image. Yeah. Asking his likeness. Yeah. Right spirituality. Not right religion. Come on. Come on now. Religion to me is ma'at. Right. Spirituality is ma'at. Yes, yes. right. right test. Be up for the test. Be inside of what you need to go through that you're going to go through. Know that each and every one of you were born into the right situation, the right set of circumstances that would strengthen you that you could cross the road like that butterfly, or like that caterpillar, and eventually unfold into the divine being that you have the capacity and the potential to be. Right diet. Oh, we just came out of Thanksgiving. And you shouldn't be thankful for it. Eating low in the hall when well, you don't have to. And there was a time when our ancestors, not too far back in the, in the, in the recent past, they ate low in the hall to survive. But now, let's not make that part of our cultural tradition. Eating things that we know does not do the body good. Everything that tastes good ain't good. And some things that don't taste good is good. Come on now. Right eating. Right exercising. Now we're talking about my eyes. I was at a restaurant here in St. Louis last week, two weeks ago. There was a big convention in town. A big church convention in town. And y'all know who I'm talking about. And everyone who was coming through that door was overweight. Because after you preach, after you get preached at, you go eat. And you eat the wrong things. Most of the illnesses and the diseases that we are dealing with has to do with not getting enough rest, we're eating the wrong foods, and we're drinking the wrong thing. And we're thinking the wrong thing. Change that for those four things, and everything changes. Right reciprocity, right cleanliness. These are all the things that we need to begin to practice if we want to be inside of the conversation of Ma'at. Yeah. So my challenge to you, as you wrap up this year, is that you recapitulate. Dr. Hagen loves big words. Yeah. Something came over me in his pulpit. To recapitulate means to look back over your life. And don't have to go too far in the past. Just look back over this year. What kept showing up? What is going on in your life that you want to extinguish? Identify what steps must you must, must what steps you must take. Where at, where in my eyes that if you begin to practice it, it'll change the situation. We don't take enough time looking back over our life. Sometimes people want you to forget. They want you to recapitulate back to 400 years ago. To define yourself inside of enslavement. But I'm saying recapitulate as far back as you can go ancestrally. If they say man was 300 years old, then somewhere inside of that whole conversation, where is God? I'm always looking for the truth. Neturu, the manifestation of God. I don't like the word God anymore because God can be anything. But I'm saying that where there's man, there is Neturu or Netur. Where there is man, there is a principle of Ma'at, Ma'at being practiced out as Ma'at. Come on, young people. And I say young in terms of eternity. That we must come to the realization of being conscious is not good enough. Mm -hmm. To be able to say a rule out that Jesus was not white is not good enough. Hey, take the conversation back to he didn't even exist. <laughs> Go ahead. Now, I don't say that to pull the rug out from under anyone. Because I could very easily 
be out of this conversation and be steeped inside of being perhaps a Hebrew Israelite or being perhaps part of the conscious brothers. But my faith is built on fact. I had some experiences that most conscious brothers who never came by way of my path know nothing about. I know the power of the, the, the words of power to speak life over someone. Preaching one day. My wife is preaching one Sunday. There's sitting about three rows behind me, a man fell over. Sitting behind him was a paramedic. Sitting to his right was his wife. I heard her say, oh God, Johnny's dead. His mama died in church. Now this is really what happened. And so all hell was about to break loose in the church. My wife took the mic and gave it to me. And I began to command, speak words of power, the authority that I had in that place to speak a word that brought that man back to life. Now you may say, oh, you just think he was dead. No. What I say? A paramedic was sitting behind him and said, he's dead. I spoke the word of power. Now I'm not saying that to draw attention to myself. I'm saying that to draw attention to you. You have the ability to say a thing, decree a thing, yeah. and it shall be a thing. That's right. That's right. But we have not been taught that. So I can't step outside of what I have experienced as true Christianity. I know the power of laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah. I know it. I see it with my own eyes. I exercise it with my own hands. Laying hands on sick, laying on the ground, on ground. Boy, he shot in the head. In the discipline. Should be on his way to wherever he's going. Fifteen years later, he's still in the streets. Because the prayer, the power of prayer, the power of decreeing a thing. Yeah. And it should be a thing. Mm. That's transformation. Yeah. Transformation has to do with taking information and applying it. If it works, it works. That's right. If it don't work, let it go. Mm. I'm not calling on Jesus' name. Because there's not power in his name, there's power in the principle. Right. To caress the Christ principle, the consciousness of Christ. I know black folks don't want to hear this message. We want to sugarcoat it. You want my instead of my ox. I challenge you, as you end this year, to move into a deeper personal transformation. I challenge you to stand up in your greatness and your divineness. You maybe can't change your exit date, but you have all authority to change your quality of life. You don't seek to extend your end date, but you can by the words that you speak, by the actions of my act that you take, have a better quality of life. Let us pray. Divine presence in this place. Divine presence in this space that moves beyond this place into the internet world, the social media world. That same presence that is in me, that is in each person that is under the sound of my voice, the connectedness 